So one of the questions that usually pops up when you have a Revlon <laughs> One Step hair dryer is how the frick do you clean this thing? And I've not found a tutorial that gives you a straightforward answer. Well, this is only 34 bucks and I'm gonna bite the bullet and show you guys what nobody else is showing. How to freaking clean this thing, actually clean. Now there's two ways you can do it. If you're brave, wanna submerge it, I would do so by dipping it in up to this point because I believe the motor is up here. But I did it the more proactive way. <laughs> That's how it over, I'll show you. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your dryer is unplugged and make sure that the plug is far away from water as possible. So you can put it off to the side, you know, wrap it up in something or just put it on the floor, just make sure it's away from water. The next thing is to make sure that you're wearing gloves. Surely you don't have to, but it's easier for the last step. And make sure when you're washing it, you hold the hairbrush dryer in this position. If you hold it like this or hold it like this, that is bad because water can get down in the motor and that is a problem. I already washed this to try it and I turned it on afterwards and it works perfectly fine. You're gonna need some shampoo, toothbrush, and a special tool for uh, taking out your hair. Now I'm not gonna do the full thing, like the full scrubbing. Uh, you guys can do that because I already washed this, but I'm gonna show you what I do. Use hot water, really hot water, as hot as you can possibly bear it with your glove. That's why I said use the gloves. So turn on your hot water. You're gonna hold the brush in the upside down position and always be mindful that water does not go back in here. Kind of like you're washing a tear. So you hold it under the water. And I discovered this because I looked inside of it. I didn't see any coils or anything. So I'm like, they wouldn't make this and not give you the ability to wash it. Okay, so now once it's saturated, it's a little bit wet, the bristles are wet, you're going to take a shampoo that lathers very well. And you're going to put it around like this on each side of the brush, wet it a little bit, you're going to use your toothbrush or the cleaning brush and move downward this way. Don't do like that. I've seen some people doing that. If you're holding it over the water, you want to make sure that everything is going down that way. Same way you would wash your hair. Make sure that you use something like this though to pick the hair out before you start washing it. So, as you can see, and it is flatter a little bit. And this will ensure that the water and the debris and everything uh, goes off in this direction. Always keep it away from the motor going in this direction. Now after I lather that, you can also use the gloves as well to just squeeze the bristles. Try and get some of that grease off. Again, going in that direction. All right. And now, this is much easier also to the sprayer. You can put it under the water like this, keeping it angled this way. I have to keep reiterating that because I don't want anyone to electrocute themselves. Or you can use a sprayer like I have and spray downward. It looks so much better. If you really want to be nitpicky, you can take a little Q-tip and go around, but you don't really need to because what you're really doing is getting the grease from your hair and the products off of it. All right, now, after you've done this, is important. Don't set the brush down. Don't set it down. If you have to set it down, put it in like a dish tray or something or a bowl so it's always standing upward so you can prevent the water from going back in the motor. Now, you're going to hold the plug. Start to get out any excess water. Okay, now the next step is very, very important. You can see my brush is clean. There's no hair, there's no debris. As you can see here, it's not plugged in. Do not plug this in after you wash it, please. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take another blow dryer. If you don't have another blow dryer and for some reason this is your only one, let it sit overnight. Now I know I've got enough water out of it so it's not gonna, there's no danger of it going back into the motor. Still put it on a flat surface and I wouldn't hold it upside, you know, right side up. Keep it either angled or flat after you've flashed all the water out of it. You can leave it on a towel overnight. Uh, you can leave it in a heated room. You can just leave it until you are sure it's dry enough. And let's say you left it for a day, make sure that you, you flash it to make sure there's no water in it. Keep your gloves on, keep your rubber gloves on and get another hair dryer if you want this to go faster. I'm gonna use the hair dryer. This is my other hair dryer. This is the plug for that hair dryer that I'm gonna plug in. The Revlon dryer is still unplugged. I just want you guys to see that. I'm gonna move that away. Put your other hair dryer, if you're using hair dryer, on the highest heat setting and the highest hair setting. Hold your Revlon upside down and start to blow through it. Now even after 
after I've dried it, I'm going to flash it out, make sure there's no water droplet, and I'm gonna keep my gloves on. Make sure the gloves you're using are rubber gloves. Take the plug for the Revlon dryer, plug it in, and then to test it, it's in the off position right now, I'm gonna put it on the cool setting. <sighs> to move anything out of it, and I'm gonna put it on the low heat setting. And the high heat setting. Working perfectly fine. You don't have to sit there for hours spraying shampoo on it and afraid to get it wet. I think they were smart enough to design the dryer in a way that there's nothing inside of it that can damage it. So if you even wanted, you could soak your brush like a regular brush, like your regular hairbrush. You can get a bowl and soak it. So long as the water doesn't go up to the motor, you can soak your brush. I don't want to tell you that's your decision and make sure that it's unplugged when you do that, clearly. I think the reason they don't tell people that is because they don't want to get sued if something happened. As you can see, I was able to put water completely through it. I figured, look, it's $34. If it breaks, it breaks, but I want to experiment. And I looked through the little holes and I could not see anything that was mechanical inside of it and I figured even if there's like coils inside of it they would dry out after so let me just bite the bullet if it breaks buy another $34 there you go